in the John Mew Growth Theory, which is in my book, um, I'm saying that the uh, I, when I was a student, I was told there were growth centres and growth was controlled in various ways. And I just thought that through everywhere, and it just doesn't make sense. You mean like Enloe? And which? Enloe? No, Enloe did different. He was mm -hmm. following facial growth, yeah. and he was studying averages of American growers, which was where he went wrong. I had a long discussion with him about this, um, and he actually agreed with me, which somewhat surprised me. But I said, you know, the work that you've done is to study um, average Americans who um, had a, a growth direction uh, around 50 degrees, which is, you know, a bit like that, um, who had no room for, the, some of them had no room for their wisdom teeth, and a lot of them had mild crowding, very mild. He chose a, a good healthy sample, but they still had many of these problems. Therefore, he was, his sample that he said, this should grow here, that should grow there, this angle, that angle, is entirely biased, biased and based on a relatively small people who grew better than most, but much worse than our primitive ancestors. Therefore, you've got to take what he said, and it was good stuff, with a pinch of salt, because it doesn't relate to everybody. Because he's the one that said about the growth center and the condyle. Yes, and, yeah. not. So, it doesn't make sense. Why should there be a growth center in the condyle? I, I, there are far more uh, cell, the growth cells everywhere in the body. Uh, they, they are concentrated more in some areas than others. And of course, in young children, there are far more of them. But each so-called growth centre is simply a group of cells which are growing and as they grow they start as being omnipotent and they become more and more restricted and ultimately they become an osteoblast or an osteoclast or a blood cell or anything you know they they do become everything now what nobody has answered is how do they know to do that Nobody ever, and it is the biggest question. DNA. Huh? Hmm? It's information in the DNA. Yes, yes, they know that. But how far does that take you? But the think this problem. Every um, uh, sperm and every egg cell is identical. We know that. Um, so therefore, how do they join together and form different cells? I mean, if they're identical, how can they divide, 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 and then turn into a blood cell or a bone cell. What is there inside them that enables them to do that? Well, the mitosis divides it and then yes, they but How does it know whether it's got to be a blood cell or a what's it cell? It's pre-programmed in cells. If it's identical, how can it be pre-programmed? Hmm. I don't know. Well, no, no, I, I, I've never heard an answer to that question either. But I produced my own, which is that um, as the cells multiply, their position tells them what to do. Their, every cell is the presented location. with a map of the whole human, the egg cell and the sperm, a whole human. But... It only does what the cell in that position should do. Therefore, to begin with, they simply know they're a bone cell and they start laying bones. But as their position becomes established within the skeleton, they know that their job is to grow the condyle. But remember, you'll, you've got, you'll have a palisade of cells in a condyle or any other part of the body. Um, everyone is identical but they're all doing a subtly different job. I mean, if a curve is like that, this one is going to be a slightly different shape than this one. And yet it knows. How does it know? The pressure. No, I'm sure it's the position. There isn't another explanation. 
And that's another John Muse say. If you read my book, you'd know about it. I've read your book. Yes, but you've done what everybody does. <laughs> oh, this is all about cells. No, I've translated your book. So you did. So you did. Well, go back and look up the it. I, 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 in my first book, I went into much more detail. Then I found nobody wanted to know. So I did it much more abbreviatedly in my second book, which is the one you translated, but it's still there. If you read it, it goes into the explanation of how growth going to, because I was brought up in the days of growth centers. Um, in fact, people were chopping, they were saying that the nasal septum is a growth center. Well, chop it up and see what happens. So poor monkeys have their noses chopped up to make a damn bit of difference. They kept having these ideas. And I can remember them writing reams and reams. If you go back to the 1950s, the AJO was full of articles on the control of growth. You never see it now. They stopped looking. But they, they never came up with that theory of mine. I'm sure it's right, but it'll probably be another couple of hundred years before they'll come to that. Anyway, I, I just described that uh, you could, there's lots of research. I went into the research here quite deeply. You could basically do it with um, plant research. You know, the um, if you transplant bits of plants, they will grow. It's quite strange, but fascinating. You know, if you cut down um, one of the plants that grow with suckers, which is a cherry tree as one, if you cut it off at its stump, um, it will die. It can't regenerate that. So, but all around it, suckers will come up from the roots. Well, how, how, who's telling the roots? It might be 20 foot away. Who's saying, oh, by the way, someone's chopped the tree down. You better make another one. Who's telling it? Yeah, but if the tree's been cut down and disappeared, what's telling the, the roots which are under the ground? They're not some of them are this far down. They suddenly sprout a new tree. Anyway, uh, just to point out, it's a lot more complicated than we think. But um, it's the same when you start transplanting um, cells in animals. The earlier you transplant, if it's, say, um, uh, what, a... 32 cell ball, which is very early on. Um, if you, it's already decided which is the head and which is the tail. It's one of the first things to happen. Then very quickly after that, it decides which is the right and which is the left. Um, if you, at that point, take a cell out, another cell will move in and do just the same job. You won't have noticed any difference. The organism will be a tiny bit smaller, and that's all you'll notice. If you wait a bit until specialization has started and remove a cell, you might find they don't form an arm. Because the cells that were going to form the arm have gone, and there's no arm. But if you wait at very different points, you'll find that regeneration becomes all strict replication they can do. If I remove a lump out of your liver, it will grow again. If um, uh, I chop your condyle off, it will grow again. Yes, it will. Lots of examples of that. Really? That's why I think all the TMD came, I think, as a loopy. They just don't think they're not logical. 